Hey there Dev Squad Vertus here and welcome back to my Unreal Engine 4 FPS series. Within today's video, we're going to be taking a look at how we can set up a simple grenade for our FPS game. When you press G on the keyboard, what it's going to do is spawn in a projectile which is going to be in the form of a blueprint actor which is going to be moved forwards using projectile movement and after a second it is going to play a particle effect simulating an explosion. What we're then going to do in the next video is look at how we can actually get that grenade explosion to damage the enemies. But for now let's go ahead and dive into Unreal Engine and get started. So the first thing you're going to need to do is go into your content browser and we're going to be creating a blueprint class which is going to be containing all of the information related to this grenade. And we're simply going to give this the name Grenade Actor and then we're going to open it up. Once we've done this, what we're going to be doing is adding in a component for the static mesh. The static mesh is essentially going to give us the physical representation of this grenade. Now we don't have a grenade model, so all we're going to do is simply search for the simple sphere shape and it should look like this. And what you want to do is just sort of drag this so it's centered in the middle of this actor. Now for the material, we're going to make this look a little bit more like a grenade. This step is entirely optional, it's up to you. But I'm actually going to be looking for the tech panel material here. And once you give it a couple of seconds to compile, it's going to look a little bit more metallic and a little bit more like a grenade. You can play around with all of the different materials and all that good stuff. It's entirely up to you. If you have your own mesh, then you can use your own mesh. But for now, this looks like a grenade to me and something we can work with. Now, with this grenade actor, if you drag it into your scene, you are going to notice it is a little bit too big. So having said that, what we're going to need to do is adjust the scale of this. So we're going to open this up and then we're going to go to the static mesh and in the details panel, with this window open here, all we're going to do is just adjust the scale until we get the size that we're after. So instead of 0, uh, 1.0, we're going to try 0 0.1 instead by 0 0.1 and 0 0.1. And that is going to give us a grenade which is 10% of the current size. And as you can see here, that looks the perfect size to me. Once we've done this, what we can then do is just go back into our viewport and just make sure that this is centered again. As you can see here, at the moment it has gone off a little bit so you want to try and get it dead on the center if you can and if you need to you can also adjust your snapping turn it off and get it in there perfectly now with the collision of this we need to make sure this is set to block all as we are going to be using it as a physics actor what we're also going to be doing is making sure that we check simulate physics on there as well once we've done this, we're going to go ahead and hit compile. And then what we're going to do is just go into our level, press play. And what should happen is the grenade is going to fall out of the sky and it will land on the floor. All you're doing here is checking to make sure that the collision is all good. It doesn't go through or anything like that. It is going to stay there. And if I wanted to, I could even kick it around. So with that being done, what we're going to do now is go into our project settings to set up the input for this grenade. And we're going to be linking this to the G key or any other key that you might want to add for the controllers for your game or anything like that. So what you want to do is just go to edit, project settings, and then you want to go over to the input tab. We're going to be creating an action mapping. And then what we're going to do with this action mapping we've just created, we are going to be giving this the name grenade. For the input, we're going to be setting this to the keyboard event for the letter G. Once we've done this, we are then going to close this and we are going to open up our third person character. In our third person character, this is where we're actually going to be spawning in this actor that we've just created. So, find yourself a little bit of blank space all the way down at the bottom and what we're going to do is we are going to right click and we're going to type in grenade. And we are going to find our action event for our grenade. And then essentially now whenever they press one of the key bindings for that grenade, it is then going to execute any code that is hooked up to this. So on G, all we're going to do is spawn an actor from class. So make sure you've got the right node. Spawn 
actor from class, just as I have done here, and then your class is going to be the grenade actor that you have just set up. Now, we're going to be leaving all of these settings the way they are, but for transform, we have to do a little bit of blueprint magic to make sure that it actually spawns in front of the player and offsets a little bit as well. So having said that, what we're going to be doing is from spawn transform, we are going to make a transform because we're going to be putting in custom information into this. Now for the rotation, we are simply going to get the actor rotation and this is going to be for the player. And then for the location, what we're going to be doing is vector plus vector. So go ahead and find that vector plus vector. As you can see, I have got here. So that's vector multiplied. So vector plus vector. And then what you want to do is essentially take the current location, which is get actor location. And then what we're going to be doing with this is using the rotate vector and then with this we are going to get the control rotation to essentially find out where the player is looking and then we're going to use a grenade offset into this to offset it a little bit so it spawns in front of the player and not inside of the player so having said that we're going to create a new variable and we're going to give us the name grenade offset and then for the variable type we're going to set this to vector we're going to hit compile and we are going to set our default value to 300 and that is for our X. Get this grenade offset and then we're just going to hook it up straight into here. So what should happen now is I am going to be able to spawn this into our scene. Press possess, press G and as you can see here it is going to be spawning that grenade in front of me. It is not going to be, it's not going to be spawning it behind me. It's always going to be in front pretty much where the crosshair is. With that all set up what we can now do is move on to the next step which is adding the impulse to make this fly forwards and also handle the explosion as well. All of this is going to be handled within that grenade actor blueprint that we've created. What we're going to be doing is on event begin play we are going to be adding in a impulse so add impulse and we're going to be doing this using the static mesh as the reference the impulse itself is going to be a little bit of blueprint magic again this is going to be vector multiplied by vector and then what we're going to be doing with this is a little bit of code so what we're going to do is get our player controller to start with and then with this we're going to be getting our control rotation so get control rotation and with this all we're going to be doing is taking that and essentially making it add an impulse in that direction so you want to find out where the player is looking and propel it that way rather than just sort of any preset way that we've got at the minute so having said that what we're going to do now is get our rotation x vector and we're going to hook this up into our A. And then our X, our Y, and our Z here, we are essentially just going to be putting some data into this, which is telling the engine how much of an impulse to add. So this is where you're going to be controlling the strength. So what we're going to do to start with is add a simple little number, like 2000 by 2000 by 2000. Hit play, hit possess, press G. And as you can see here now, our grenades are going flying forwards. Now, if you think this is a bit too fast, which in my opinion it is, all you need to do is go in here and reduce that number. So we're going to change it from 2000 to 1000. And that is going to be on all three of those axes. Go ahead and hit play, possess, press G now. And as you can see here now, that is a more realistic grenade throw. So that's all working. What we need to do now is essentially add some code which is going to make it blow up and explode after a second. So what we're going to do is from the execution pin after the impulse, we are going to add a delay. This delay duration is going to be one second. And then what we're going to do is spawn an emitter attached. So we're going to be attaching this to the sphere component. So get a reference to your static mesh. You want to hook this up to your attach to component. Our emitter template is going to be our 
P underscore explosion, which is pretty straightforward. The location and the rotation, all of this is going to be staying the same. Same goes for our location type as well. The only thing we are going to be adjusting is our size. So what we're going to do is multiply this by 100 to make it nice and big so we have a big explosion. Once again, you are going to be able to adjust that value. And as you can see here now, as it explodes, we have got this explosion going on. Now what you will notice is if it's a bit too big, all you need to do is go in there and change it. So change it to something like 60 by 60 by 60, it's entirely up to you. And you also have the ability to add in your own particle effect as well if you have that. And as you can see here now, at 60 by 60, I've got a much more realistic sized explosion. If you want to turn it down a little bit more, then by all means, you can do that. You can reduce that number down to 30 by 30. It's up to you. You want to get the look and the style that you want. This is your game at the end of the day. And as you can see, I'm happy. Now, the one last thing that we're going to be doing is simply spawning in a sound effect. This sound effect is going to be pretty straw. This sound effect is going to be pretty straightforward. All we're going to be doing is spawning a sound at the location. The sound is going to be for our explosion. So explosion Q. And then the location is going to be the location of this mesh over here. So we are going to get the world location of the static mesh, which is the sphere, and we're going to hook it up to our location. We're then going to hit compile, hit play, hit possess, press G, and when it explodes, you can now hear that explosion going off. And that is pretty much everything for our simple grenade. There's still loads more that we can do, such as adding in a throwing animation, getting it to actually add the zombies, but for now, I am happy with where it's at. Having said that, guys, thanks again for watching. Stay awesome, keep creating. Your boy Virtus, signing out. This video was made possible by my supporters on Patreon. If you want more videos like this, check out my Patreon page using the link in the description. To stay up to date on new releases, make sure you follow us on social media.